We professionals do not use it. <laughs> okay. We use additive manufacturing because that's the right terminology. 3D printing terminology is not defining the idea of the whole industry. So I don't believe in the scanners and machines much. I believe in the R&D and the process, how you use them. Know how. Any new technology out there, they are high potential, but people are not ready to take so it. Adoption. Drones is a very big industry in 3D printing and most used. All right, so aspiration and vision is here. But what about challenges? What is the problem why this technology is slow in adaptation? Is the 3D files. Mm -hmm. and, and they recycled industrial plastic and they produce filaments. Okay. Bang. We like confidential, tell me more. <laughs> what do you think, uh, where would your company be now if you would not join the group? 3D printing is a one little, pros one little step in the whole process. You have to convince them, because somebody who's using traditional manufacturing for 15 years. Sounds scary and, and, and good. Welcome to episode 6. Today we're going to talk about 3D printing technology. I am in Jebel Ali Industrial Area 1 in Dubai, in Joseph Group Facilities. Today I will meet Proto21 Startup. They are fastest growing startup in the 3D printing technology. Interesting fact, founder is the first person to build 3D printer in Pakistan. Super excited to meet him. So let's go and check it out. By the way, please subscribe, like, and share our channel. This is how you're gonna help us to grow. Thank you. Hello, Hello Arkham. Welcome. Welcome to Proto 21. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Looking forward to see what you guys do here. Sure. Um, so we're a company called Proto 21 3D Printing, LLC. And we do, we are the one of the leading 3D printing companies in Middle East and Africa. We can start from showing you what we do in the industrial grade plastics, and then we can show you how we make them, and then we can show you the print farm. Print farm, so sounds please. good, yeah, let's go. This is our state-of-the-art facility for HP Multijet Fusion Technology. It's a 4200 series 3D printer, and it can print industrial grade plastics, so we've literally done models that fit inside the dashboards of North Voice. Okay, really? And we've done guns that work for sophisticated work, like we can change the wood part of the gun and we make it plastic to have less weight for the armsman to shoot better. Okay. When you talk about drones, we can just print drones in a lighter weight, higher strength, and there are many various applications that we can show you. Yeah. So let me just quickly demonstrate how the machine works. This is one of the most expensive machines in 3D printing. It, it is of 1.5 million dirhams. This one? HP, Multi-Jet Fusion. Uh, it is a two unit, and then this part is a post-processing unit. So first the machine is printed here. So if I can. Now over here is like a additive manufacturing process. Like it is, it layers a layer of powder that is okay. PA12. And then after that, it is like fused for the lamps that is UV. Uh, okay. Resistance. So, so what is yeah. tightening yes, the material? Yes, it, it just like fuses the material to have a strength, so it's in a green state first. And then when it moves there, it just heats down so that it becomes more stronger. The printer can produce industrial grade polymer, like I said, it can do applications that are engineering grade. It can withstand, the printed parts can withstand around 250 degrees Celsius yeah. as, a, as a temperature. And more on, it is strong enough to be used for the automotive grade. I mean, we have used parts that go inside the cockpit of a plane and, and things like this for MS Airlines and many, many reputable brands. Okay. Let's say, I don't know, what, what the size you can print here? Sure. Now, when, whenever it talks about 3D printers, you go on online and people are talking about 3D printing homes and stuff. That's there, but it's in, under R&D. 3D printers, since it's additive manufacturing, yeah. so it literally starts from scratch. So if you talk about big models, it's not the right like a technology for it because when you come down to real applications and engineering commercial use, commercial use the 3d printers are for the small small size prototypes 
and a low volume production. Okay. What, what size are we talking? Let's I mean, over here is like 38 centimeters okay. by 38 centimeters in height and it's 28 centimeters in length. So it's a box volume. So you can print a lot of pieces in one billion. That's a, like a, 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 I can say a pro of this. And in terms of cons, I mean, it has a material that is inside there. So mm. it's like a, once it is the whole build is done, the material is reused, the remaining part. So it's like a, it doesn't waste material much. Okay. It's like 20% fresh powder, 80% the used powder that we can re reuse again. We have a machine that does the residual removal from the printed parts. And then it goes towards this place. I can show you how these parts look like. So over here is some of the models. I mean, this is a, a case, which is literally a final and used part. Okay. And this was like around 100 pieces we did for one of the Saudi very important company. It was all made in a like a specific bespoke manner. Okay, so let's say it, it was printed over there. Yes. Then proceed to the post-processed, sandblasted. And sandblasting. What and does right, it do? Sandblasting. Sandblasting just takes away the residual material because once the model comes out from there, this powder is really like uh, ferrous. So when you when you take it out, it's like it's stuck there. So you want to remove the residual material and just have the fused one come out. So yeah. that's that's what is here. This is Sheikh Zayed. Okay, yeah. So I, I presented this as a gift to Adnock. Yeah. They loved it so much. They said, Arkham, can we do 6.5 meter high? I'm like, um, we cannot 3D print it. He said, I don't care yeah. if it's 3D printed or if it's not. You did it. Yes, it's outside Conreach, Abu Dhabi. If I don't have 3D printing, I cannot get this out. I mean, you see, like, this is a complex structure. How would you create it otherwise? Yes. So 3D printers have an accuracy of 100 microns in this machine. So it can go wrong. Yeah, crazy. Look at this dragon. <laughs> this is a prop model. It's okay. like some showcase, showpiece model. But what I'm trying to say in this machine, usually it's famous for engineering stuff, but we have come out to this quality level of detail, yeah. which people don't do, don't use it out, out in there in the market. So in Proto 21, we, we, we're all about how we can reach to the highest potential of a technology and exploit it. <laughs> yeah. So we've done it. I mean, okay, so you, you practicing it yes. and then trying to It's all to about do the research. DFAM rules. So design for additive manufacturing rules okay. that we apply that good that yeah. we are here. Um, yeah, so these are some, actually these are orders that are probably going out now. So these so are some- like actual client. These are actual client, they're like gonna come and pick it up. And these are some walls of some, the industrial works. Why would they order that? Is this specific measurement sure. or? See, many times there's a concept of digital warehousing. Okay. Now digital warehousing is all about, let's suppose if we have a Dubai Metro. Dubai Metro doesn't have to stop during the work hours. Yeah. If it stops, the whole line stops. True. So for example, some of the door handle or something is broken. They have to order it. Yeah. And they have to keep a, each and every piece of the whole car, they have to keep it in their warehouse. Somewhere nearby, so something yeah. goes wrong, they have it. They don't need a warehouse anymore Then when you have additive manufacturing technologies. You can literally have a digital warehouse. That means a USB yeah. where you can have your, all the files, oh, digital it. files, and on demand, you order them with us. So basically they have everything, all the objects digitally. Yeah. And then once happens, something happens, they can, how yes. long it takes, let's say, from the time the client call you, yeah. we need that little small part. Next day. They sending you a file? Yeah. Bam, bam, you upload Every it. day we have a print here. Next have, day. Next day. And on top of it, the price is competitive to injection molding. Okay. We have brought down the cost in Proto 21. Yeah. We brought down to commercial level. So it's not like if you need a thousand pieces so that the price is 10 dirhams a unit. No, no you can have one, you. two, three, four, as much as you want on demand. Yeah. So this is another, these are some aluminum fit outs. I would like to show you what, how complex it is and why it's done in 3D printing. Now see object like this. I mean, there's like technical concern how it should be made. Like you cannot produce it otherwise the way it is. It's in one piece. Okay. So what do you mean aluminum fit outs? Um, when they say like, there's a doors, windows, when they combine together on the edge, yeah. they're like, you talk about Burj Khalifa. Okay. That's done by Al Abar Group, for example. They need a particular angles at particular points. The crazy buildings they make these days, like Zaha Hadid architecture yeah. and stuff. They need the specific bespoke. They cannot buy off shelf because of their, because their designs are out of, yeah, out of they range. They create it, yeah. Yeah, so they need bespoke for their particular requirement. So when there's a bespoke designs done in any industry, they need bespoke stuff and they don't need in quantity. Okay. That's where they come to us. Yeah. 
Oh, that's amazing. And it's like, it, it's very kind of, of course, durable. robust. Try breaking this. I would afraid to break it. <laughs> it yeah, but like, yeah, yeah I yeah, see you, 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 can, you apply you pressure. Can break, yeah. You can break this. So do you covering with? No, it's just raw from the printer and it's just strong enough. Okay. Yeah. What's the material name? Uh, it's PA12, but it's called HP PA12. So that because every printer, they have their printed uh, materials, they have their specific names. Yeah. And then we have this machine that's actually printing at the moment, luckily. Uh, this is a color jet printer to color printed parts. It's really exciting to always see it. This is our general manager, Mr. Mr. Um, uh, Matthew from Joseph Group. Okay, yeah. you actually printed him. Yeah, we can literally scan a face and my designers are good enough to replicate a design 3D file. Can I see details? Yes, please. And these are some buildings printed from the Google Earth. I realized long ago that the, what is the problem why this technology is slow in adaptation is the 3D files mm -hmm. and 3D design. So you I need to create or either scan? Correct, because both of the things are, people are not familiar with it. There's no R&D done much. People are relying on 3D scanning, that doesn't work. So from the very beginning, when I started, I mean, I was sure that we need to work, focus best in there so that we can bring out the best of the technology in the process and everything. So this building is literally done from Google Earth. So you, you tell me now, any part of the Earth. And you can print it. I can print it. Sounds scary and, and, and good. Yes. So this is just an example. We can go crazy as this much in colors. This is a bus. So it was already printed with and this full print color. And the color. With full color. We have not painted it. So it's actually printing now something? Yes, it's printing, but you, you, you cannot see much. Yeah, because it's what, first layer or exactly. something. Exactly. It, how it works is imagine a paper, pr yeah. paper printed, and I have another paper printed on top. And you keep building. So when a book is there, you don't see what's inside yeah. unless you open it. It builds, it prints like a, like a cube, mm -hmm. and then you're removing the, yes. let's say, powder, yes. Yes. and then you see the object. Yes. I think that moment when you're blowing yeah, the it's powder, always, it's, like it's a nice feeling. Revealing yeah, yeah, the object. 100%. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So that's how you bring in the object and... Yeah, yeah this is a post-processing unit. I used to do this myself when I started the company. Of course, it was me alone. But slowly and gradually, it's been a long time that I haven't done it. But I still know every process going involved in the whole process. We have different methods than what industry is doing. We don't do, we don't buy a scanner off shelf and try to get a good quality out. And Fast and Furious, Vin Diesel says, it's not about the ride, it's about the rider. Okay. <laughs> so you see the printers, the one that I have is already out in the market. Yeah. But they don't get out qualities like us. Yeah. There's a reason behind it's it. It's not enough to have only a printer. True. It's true. Like, it depends, I mean, how you drive it. Yeah, so correct. it's all the process. So I don't believe in the scanners and machines much. I believe in the R&D and the process, how you use them. Know how. Know how. So um, we have a great team with me here. It's my production manager, Jamshir. So we worked in a company and I said, I'm going to resign and start my company. Would you join me? He said, yes. All right. So you and then, Yes. And then since then, I mean, I started the company first and I then brought him here. And he's our production manager with us. Um, quickly, if I can show you what uh, this, um, our Designer is doing here, Zed. Yes, please. This model over here is actually a handheld laser gun for hair removal. So okay. during COVID times, a, a doctor reached us out and said, can we create a hair removal device from scratch? Okay. Because I have a new design in my head, because the ones that they traditionally have so are it was not- an idea only. It's an idea only. So Fine. the process is you designing, let's say, yeah. a 3D kind of yeah. object, yeah. printing, testing, yeah, Wrong testing. again. Of course, of course. Yeah. It's oh, already the one. product development, we call it. This particular is product development. So you, you have an existing object and you want to improve. So initially the object that was there out there, it was a like parametric because that is what is done in traditional technologies. Okay. So in 3D, we can make organic. Like you, can you, can you see yeah, a little? I think like a handle, yeah? yeah. It's comfortable. I mean, we have a camera also made to, to So if you need any of your yeah. uh, battery holding okay, cameras, you can improve, I yeah? can improve, 100%. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> you go, guys. You can uh, have a, a steady grip. Actually, we have done for Skydive Dubai. All right. For Jetman Dubai. And many other oh, companies. To, yes. to hold the camera when they're jumping. 100%. To have a grip. And there's one confidential project going on for uh, vloggers. We like confidential. Tell me more. <laughs> But oh, I see drone propellers as well. Oh, yes. Uh, these are some, uh, of course, drones is a very big industry in 3D printing and most used because it, it, you can have less weight so that you have yeah. less power consumed. And then you can have propellers done in particular 
um, um, orientation of the airfoil yeah. so that the output is higher and the input is lower in terms of efficiency of Guys, the... Guys, we need to, to hook you up with... Uh, we did another episode with oh. the drone company, Feds. Really? And they're doing custom things. That's... Oh, here okay. you go. You that, know, we need nice. to link you up with Please. this. Please. At this part, we have an architect with us full-time, Mr. Imran. Hi. And he's actually currently working on a proposal for Etisalat. Oh, so you have a different kind of industry areas of where course, you... Of course. We have different uh, uh, people and they're best in what they do. Yeah. And then he's preparing a proposal for Etisalat to how to showcase their like uh, connectivity map and things like this to showcase on the wall. So you guys are gonna print that surface? Or yes, okay. of course. Like it's a mix of technologies, and we will do the artwork installation. We don't when we take a project, we don't see okay everything is 3D printable. 3D printing is a one little pros, one little step in the whole process. Yeah. But people in the market have taken 3D printing as the answer to every That's every it. problem. Yeah. It's not a Harry Potter and a stick. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of the steps in the whole process. And you, need and to you use that step correctly. Okay. The steps before, steps after have a lot to do in that. Mr. Kashif, Hello. I have a very inspiring story for him. Please. He was my first employee, okay. my first team member, and every machine inside there is, is done by him. So you guys will build machine or like or I will, assemble? Uh, we, we buy machines and we upgrade them. Imagine we buy a Toyota and put a Mercedes engine in it. <laughs> okay, because that's the need or? Of course, that's the need. Uh, it's also like, it, it depends on a lot of factors. We don't follow standards, we make standards. Yeah. In terms of technology, in terms of designs, in terms of every process that is out there. Over here is a- That's a farm. That's a farm. Yes, okay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where this, uh, the word came in, in being in the, in, the, in the internet, but it's very famous. So it's like a literally, when, when I've seen one of your videos, probably it's a botanical farm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is a farm of different farm. Yeah. This is a different farm. It produces parts because you can do vertical level. You can go next level on top in the future. All right. To have three rows, and I mean in this farm you can produce around 50 parts. That is a size at, at the same moment. Yes. Let, at the same moment. So let me closer, quickly yeah. show you. These are the printers that we have and we have upgraded them. So that's your logo? Yes. Oh, okay, that's why you, you customize. We have customized a lot of things, electronics, um, extruders. Now, this extruder is 3D printed in my factory. Okay. It's printed with H3 multi gel fusion. <laughs> yeah. And then put so here. printer printed, uh, uh, 3D printer. printer. <laughs> yes. We are Give me the time, to... how long it takes? I to... mean, depends on the size of the model. It starts from one hour okay. to three days. You can three yes, days. Three days, based on the complexity. If I can show Small you. Small one. Yeah. I mean, this quick model. Have you seen uh, Game of Thrones? Yes. So this is an elephant. It's very complex. Yeah. Many I know. details. Yeah. Now, when you have this complex model and you want to go high resolution in the machine, it can go and take hours. What do you mean resolution? Like detail? Resolution is a layer height. Uh, okay, resolution. So lower the layer height, the longer the time and higher the resolution. Yeah. So all these printers can print a lot of materials. We have every material. Uh, on board at all times. We are never out of material because my clients are like they needed yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dubai. UA style, Dubai <laughs> style, style, yeah. In the beginning, I was using normal material from China, from anywhere, from United States. Raw. Raw material, I was just buying any material using it. But then I found out there's a company out there in UK called Filamentif, and they recycled industrial plastic and they produce filaments. Okay. Bang, I said, I gotta- That's what you're using. I said, I gotta talk to them. And I'm gonna be a distributor, partner. I will, I will promise to use their filament in the Proto 21. We have this SLA machine. It's from Form Labs from United States. It is for SLA prints. So high definition, when you talk about um, high detail. Um, for example, this. Now see oh, the resolution wow, of this okay. model is something else out of this world. Yeah, and again, object inside the object. Yeah, the crazy one. And we can print transparent stuff. Oh, by the way, this is one bottle. The cup. Yeah. It's transparent. Yeah. But of course, not coming from the printer like this. Okay. Once it's printed, my guys post-process it to have our R&D again. Yeah. To get this quality. No, and people in the internet, all over LinkedIn, they're going crazy that, Arkham, how you achieve this? Okay. Because is this something latest in the yes. market? Or? Of course. This is a, probably only the printer here in Middle East currently. Oh, really? Okay. And this is from Forms Labs, and they have different material grades. 
every material that I print out of Forms Labs, I have a spec specification sheet. So some of them are dental approved. Uh, okay. Some of them so are the board accepts yeah, that. Yeah, sometimes they're flexible. Some of them are transparent. Some of them are like different for the different industries. Yeah. It's on the different grades we have available at all times. Machine something like this, how much it can cost? This is a 60,000 dirhams printer. But wow. I mean, we have more expensive than these machines. Yeah, the, the big ones. Yeah, the big yeah. ones, yeah. Again, we have one more printer there that is a Modix. It can print 1.2 meters, one go. Okay. It's the largest larger, size. Larger objects. I see the surface is moving in Ex this one. Exactly. Yeah? So in FDM technology, there are many different versions. So sometimes the surface is moving up and down. Sometimes the surface is static and the extruder is moving all the way. Yeah. Cartesian like that one. Uh, that is a WASP printer. And that printer can, uh, it has a surface is stable. So you see it's a, simply a metal plate down there. Yeah. But the up there, this moves all over. It's locked right now, but it can move in all directions. Yeah. And then over here is a metal plate. It simply prints and then moves up. Okay, so, so can, what's specific about this printer? Okay, sure. Um, any object over here that in a Z direction needs to be fast. Z direction means in the, in the upward direction. Let's okay. say any model that is required to have that uh, particular requirement is done here. How many printers do you guys have? <laughs> In total, we have more than 60 machines now. 60. I started from one yeah. three years ago. You're looking for, for more? You're of course, uh, I want to keep on. Really? Yeah, okay. it's like, it's going to keep on going. We have printed 32 meters of uh, Adidas in oh, Dubai Mall. I've seen that, yeah. 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 Can I, can I sure. hold? That's a one. Yeah, this, this is a small piece. Oh, it's of light. Small craft, it's light, yes. We save a lot of material in that. So what you did, you printed a lot of these objects yeah. and like what <coughs> they join that together. Yeah, it's one little cross section of the entire piece. So let's now talk about the post processing. And so uh, it means once you print it, once you, I don't know, put in another machine to make it tough and durable. Yeah. That's the post processing. Now. Of course, yeah. I mean, post processing has to usually do with surface treatment. So yeah. surface treatment is about getting it more quality of yeah. surface. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a confidential method of doing uh, post-processing and getting the best out of the post-processing step yeah. to get the smooth finish. And most of the items that we do is like very famous in the market that right. how could you get that quality with that paint in nine days? Correct me if I'm wrong, is this an object for the expert? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you can't, can't do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Wassel, Al Wassel dome. Yeah. Wow, it looks um, impressive. Yeah, I mean, if you ask any company in, in the market to do this, they're going to cost you really high. For that structure and details, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and they would cost you really high and then they would have long time needed. But our processes is faster, cheaper. By the way, we have been awarded um, Autodesk Technology Impact Program okay. at the start of my company. So I was provided half a million dollars free software from Autodesk. Oh, wow. Okay. For Pro 21. They recognize you. It's important for us to, that, to be supported by software companies, machine companies. HP supported us also. I mean, because they, re they recognize you yeah, already what course. you do. They know that we can bring best of their softwares and technology, build a story. All right. Yeah. Arkham, thank you so much. Yeah, I would like to find out your to buy story in the short sentence, and then we move to the Proto 21. After my journeys of uh, Europe and studying there, I came to Pakistan to start a company. Um, it was probably for my family, my parents, and then I wanted to do something for my country and start yeah. this, my dream company in, in Pakistan. But over there- 3D printing by the time. 3D printing, yes. I mean, Proto 21, 3D printing company in Pakistan. But then I was, I was told that 3D printing is banned in Pakistan. I imported a printer, it took nine NOCs to get it clarified from customs. And I was like devastated. I said, I can't build a company here. Okay. So I, I did not know what to do, I was lost. But then in some time I, I got to know about His Highness uh, one uh, article that said that they wanted to make Dubai is a 3D printing hub of the world. And it excited me about Dubai. And my, Which year was that? It is 2017. 2017. Yeah. And then I had my brother living here, so I said, why don't I just go see Dubai? And it was my first time I came to Dubai then. When I came here, I was like, this is a place. It's a beautiful city, and then it's full of opportunities and stuff. And I said, I want to try 
starting my career there. And once I started, and then it's a history. Um, I started first with a company to understand the business market. And once I learned what's the market dynamics, once I understood the industry dynamics in the Middle East region with that company, uh, they were kind enough to let me in by knowing that I want to start my own. Okay, so you joined somewhere. Yes, I joined somewhere, time, yes. And then they allowed me to be a sales technical person there. I, I did a very good sales for them. They were happy with me. But later on, I said, now it's time to start my own. But we are good terms now. Yeah. They're my clients now. Okay, that's great. Relationship, yeah. So I just like jumped in and it took a leap of faith. I resigned totally and I was all self-funded at that time, around four months. And I struggled a lot. In the beginning, it's not easy journey. It's not recommended. Um, I don't recommend anybody to work more than 18 hours a day. Yeah. You need, you need to sleep on time. You need to eat well. Work life balance. Uh, yeah, there's no... For me, it's never gonna be. <laughs> I am a passionate man. It's like, it's my life. My work is my life. So in the beginning, I started from a small office. My ex-boss in Pakistan was kind enough, Mr. Salman Ghaznavi, to allow me a small space in uh, Citadel Tower where I started the company. Okay. He supported me a lot. I'm really thankful to him. I was trying to understand how to generate revenue because I did not have investment. But then I soon realized to be the number one in the region in 3D printing. I would need some industrial experience and I need a leader. I need somebody who can guide me the business part of it because I knew sales, I knew marketing, I knew everything, I knew technology. I was passionate, I had everything with me, but one part of it was investment. Yeah, okay. Because it's technology, it's about factory, it's about having machines and it is about infrastructure, administration, HR, accounts, a lot of things. So those parts were missing in my picture. I was lucky enough to find Joseph Group. And they initially called me for training courses. Okay. I did not know there's a group out there and it is gonna happen like this. I visited them, I gave them a quotation, but then the director, Mr. Ashik, he met me and he said, do you want to be the part of the future 3D printing company or you wanna help us establish it? I mean, what's your plan? I said, I wanna be the 3D printing, largest 3D printing company in the world. He, was in, he, was, he liked me and he, said, he offered me to be a partner. But I said I want to keep Proto 21 logo yeah. still intact because that okay, logo is so it's like, still the same from the beginning. Yes. Uh, the name, the logo is same. And I said it's my dream company. And right. uh, he liked it. And I joined. And then it's the history. So you joined the group? Yes. They invested in me. They invested in the whole idea. And we are now in this facility. Yes. In the Joseph Group facility. I get a lot of support from many aspects from installations, maintenance, ISO certifications. PR, HR. I mean, you have all networks. Yeah, yeah. And to circle back a little bit, so you started the company and how long it took till you joined the... Joseph. Yeah. Um, okay, it was six months, not more. So you started and after six months you yes. joined them? Yes, yes. So five to six months I was alone in the market. I was building the website, I was building the plan, I was researching, I was learning accounts. Yeah. I was learning how to generate revenue. In the beginning, it's all about revenue. It's not about talks. Yeah. It's about you gotta bring money so you can expand. You, you need investment to buy machines. All I had, I just bought machines from it. I had two machines. What do you think, uh, where would your company be now if you would not join the group? Oh wow, that's a very good question. I would never be, ne not, a, not at all close to where I am today. I'm, I'm looking at, I will be here six years ahead, not three years. Right now? Yes. This is how 100%. much the you did, yeah. I would never reach out here without Joseph Group. Maybe many startups right now, you know, they, they're growing, but it's slow, you know, they like uh, fighting in this entrepreneurship world. And uh, what would you be your tip, you know, like to join such a group like that? Sure. Because it straight away skyrockets. Any group, any partner, any strategic partner will give you support administration, HR, but in the end, it's about you. Of course. It's about how you sell, how you build a culture, how you utilize those resources well enough to be working. How old is a 3D printing technology? 3D printing world is very new, by the way. We professionals do not use it. Okay. <laughs> we use additive manufacturing because that's the right terminology. 3D printing terminology is not defining the idea of the whole industry. Before additive manufacturing, there was a concept of rapid prototyping so when the astronaut and the space station loses a wrench, yeah. he's not going to ask somebody to ship it out yeah. there. They need a rapid prototyping method and technique okay. to print any 
a misplaced item right there in the space station. So, they so the requirement of rapid prototyping came from there. Okay. If you print on a paper, sometimes there's an embossed printing. If you print on a paper, another print on top, let's say you print from your SP printer, yeah. and you put the same paper back again, print the same letters, same place, they will have an embossing. And then you do it more, and you do it more. And if the liquid is solidifying well, you will have a third dimensional object. All right. Got one point? Yeah. So it's like this. And then considering that, um, 3D printing is called 3D, third, uh, two dimension paper. But then it's not defining the industry because the traditional method is subtracting manufacturing. This one is additive. Additive, so yeah. That's why it's called. So we use additive manufacturing, more, more precise terminology for this. Okay. So let's say for the product 21, what's next for you guys? What are you planning to do? If you see, we are a three years old company. We have 60 machines. We are 25 people now. On the so, corner is a 3D printer. Yeah, we, we are hiring every other month and we are growing. We are fastest growing 3D printing company in, in Middle East region. Um, we will never stop. I want to go faster. Okay. And I want to I want to be the, it's my one goal in my life to be the leading 3D printing company. Or if I say leading manufacturing solution provider in the world, when it's going to happen, I want to, I want to happen tomorrow. Okay. Um, I, it's, there's no timeline for it. Like uh, His Highness Sheikh Rashid Maktoum, he was asked, why you're in hurry and why you want Dubai to be the best, fastest, best infrastructure in one of the interviews in 60 minutes in YouTube? He okay. said, so why you want to do everything? He said, I don't want my people to have best medical after 10 years, I want them tomorrow. I want today. <laughs> so okay, yeah. I'm following his lead. I want, it, I want it as soon as possible. So we're just establishing paint booth. We will buy another industrial 3D printer very soon. We are in talks with one supplier. At the same time, I want to have more factories and have global reach and uh, exploit the technology and see where we can go further with this. All right, so aspiration and vision is here. Yeah. But what about challenges? Like building this kind of company? Adoption. What do you uh, mean by that? The, the, mean, the mean is that people are unaware of the technology. They're unaware where they want to use it. You have to convince them. Because somebody who's using traditional manufacturing for 15 years, you come and tell him, no, use this way, it's going to be better. He's going to think twice because the infrastructure is set up. They have invested in those ones already. Now to ask them to change the whole process is not easy, especially in this region. Okay. Well, as in Europe and Western, it's like they're fast. They, they adopt the technology faster. It's the same problem with VR and AR. If you see the potential of those technologies and drones and any new technology 2021, well. any new technology out there, they're high potential, but people are not ready to take so it. Adoption. Is adoption, yeah. I mean, when I was studying masters in mechatronics in Turkey, they taught us something called the right time. If there's a technology best for it, but Apple iPhones and, and, uh, and the technology company will not put it in the market. Do we think that face recognition was just now? No, yeah, they had exactly. it five years ago, but we were not ready to allow face and like understand it. So it depends on when the technology is right for the time of the social. Yeah. Yeah. And, acceptance, and those, those, yeah, acceptance and stuff. But 3D printing is now faster. I see there's so many startup companies building, growing, but at the same time, we do not have 3D printing courses in universities done. Oh, okay. Education like additive manufacturing, like it's a mechanical engineering. There's a, it's also like academics affect what, what the students want to be in the future. If they're like promoted that you want to join 3D printing, they will join new companies. Then they will be influencer in those companies. Yes. Once they're influencer in those companies, they were like, I know 3D printing, I can give you. Then a, somebody who has an employee telling them that, okay, 3D is a good idea, then a, then a supplier, they trust them more. So the young generation needs to adopt this new technology so that it becomes a everyday household use. True. So which market do you think impacted the most who adopted 3D technology? Like um, which clients are you serving right now? That so many, um, if I can start from automotive, because there's a big industry here in UAE. You see the cars and stuff, there's a kind of culture here. Auto workshops, they want to revise the old cars and 3D printing is best fit for them. Kind of example, what you can do. Let's say we have done some uh, interior dashboards of Rolls Royce. So customer came. Custom, and... yeah. Customer came, said, "I need a Tesla screen in my Rolls Royce," or somebody said, "My grandfather had a Range Rover, 1980s, and it's broken. It is old now. I want to revise it. I want to make it inside prettier." So, 
those kind of things, if you, if, you, if you have a scanner and if you can scan it, photogrammetry process or somewhat, get a digital file and print it, it's nothing like that. Okay. It's fast. It's some, that's one industry that has taken benefit from 3D printing very well in this region. So this is B2C? Yeah, B2C. And then we have, we talk about B2B that is around oil and gas. So okay. uh, big companies like uh, defense, medical, prosthetics, limbs, arms and stuff, bionics. Do you guys do this? Yes, we've done, we've done quite a lot, but we're not really much um, focused in there. When you start a company, you see where the business is. Okay, so there's one passion and there's a business. Yes. Cash flow. An entrepreneur must balance both. Where you can build business, where you see an opportunity to bring in clients, you focus there and you build your company first. So once you have a setup done, now you do R&D. Yes. Now okay. we started doing That's different. That's your passion now. Yeah. Now I'm applying different concepts of digital warehousing. Now I'm trying to have another beautiful idea. I cannot disclose here. I'm working on that. That's going to change the whole industry. Okay. Um, when we can expect to find out more <laughs> uh, about it. End of this year. Can you elaborate a little bit more about digital warehousing? Sure. That's um, an interesting term. Sure. Um, when you talk about big industries, they need a lot of warehousing and warehousing is expensive. Yeah. So imagine all of that warehouse is in one USB. Okay. Right? And you have each of those items in the warehouse to have a 3D digital data captured in this memory disk. And whenever you need. bespoke, you require any part that is needed to be printed or manufactured, you go to an additive manufacturing company like Proto21 and you give us the USB, we download the file, we print it for you, and you have it next day. Okay. If you go crazy in the business part, it's reducing logistics, it's reducing warehousing costs, it's reducing time consumption, it's reducing uh, energy and effort and the resources allocated for those things. So it's a uh, future solution. So how does it work? Let's say yeah, company or we have a couple institution, of institution, and they like, they saw that video are like, okay, we want to do that. Where, where is the start? Recently, I had some uh, a doctor reaching us out for having some of this equipment to be having digital capture with us. All he, the equipment. He, yes, he sells machines like laser machines and this for beauty clinics. So all of his machines that are supplied are not in quantity. They're like in 10, 20, 30. So for that, to keep a stock of each of every machine part is difficult for him. So some of the most variable parts oh, okay. that he had he got them done with us and we have given it to him. So what do you do? You, did you scan? So he gives the existing parts to us. We apply our photogrammetry process. Got it. We make a one proof prototype with him and he tests that and he approves, okay, this digital file in this technology at this orientation and this is this, this, the whole document that is approved. Now, whenever I need this, whenever my client needs it, I give you a call or I send you to the email. Email, yeah. I and mean, we produce it in like maximum two to three days and finish in every, everything and brand it, give it back to him. Okay, nice. That's a concept. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, interesting, yeah. Future, future 3D printing. 3D printing would, would, would exploit a lot of industries, for sure. Like, a lot of industries are gonna change. It's already changing. Like, the bottle packaging industry, it's here. Like, we produce small mock-ups for the existing people who have traditional method of produce bottles, they produce in one million quantity, like my Dubai and things like that. Yeah. They need a prototype. Before, before 3D printing existed, they would go through the whole molding process to have one done so that they can go for four. And they would lose a lot of money in, in the whole process. In time. 3D printing is already there. Those guys have the 3D printers in-house so that they can quickly replicate and rep rapid prototype and do it. So just like that, in medical industry, 3D printing will, will, will definitely change a lot. I mean, all organic stuff, even if we talk about bionics, you'll have every person has a different skeleton, has a different hand, has a different, so those equipment to install inside, you will need 3D printing parts. If you say at a scale, what, where, how far it will go, they're already building rockets and going to Mars. In SpaceX, they're using rockets and they will have uh, 3D, they're using already 3D printed parts. I mean, in the airplanes, they're using it. There will be times You'll be 3D printing huge cars. You'll be 3D printing everything that is around you. Yeah. And then again, there's a limitation to the technology. We always forget. So it's additive process. It can never beat the traditional methods. Those are made for high volume. 
the yeah. welding is there. The three D printing is one step in the whole process that can be faster, but it cannot be answer to every solution. When you go on internet, they say three D printing human hearts, three D printing levers. Okay, yes, it's going to be in the future. It will there. It it will come. It is possible. It is. There's nothing is stopping it. But it's not tomorrow. It's, yes. it's 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 going to take its time to to achieve and reach there. True. As well, question. What well, Dubai have a what, Dubai 3D printing strategy or vision as well by 2030, I think. Yeah. All the buildings in Dubai by 2030, 25% will be 3D printed. Although they have 3D printed a, a building in um, some of the areas in Dubai and, and it's it's all okay. Uh, MR has done one, one full villa that is inhabitable and it's it's uh, it's fully 3D printed. But, I, but yet again, Still, you have windows inside, you have MEP, you have flooring, you have ceiling, you, you want to live in there, there's a furniture, there's a kitchen, there's a piping, there's so much more. True. It's 3D printed structure. You can say 3D printed shelter, but everything on the internet, they just, when you talk to experts and industry, people from industry, they tell you a different story. So everything they show on, on marketing and they show it on the oh, 3D printed building, and it's like a video going, things like this. Everything like that is, 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 is hyped. I have seen uh, one 3D printed, uh, uh, like a concrete building done in, uh, and I've seen how they do it. It's a one robotic arm and like 100 employees to post process it to make it nice. So it is gonna reach to a level where the automation is high, industry 4.0 is high and less human effort is there. That will reach, but it's gonna take its time. And you recently there's a, um, Alliance formed by uh, uh, Crown Prince. Yes, Alliance. Yeah, Alliance. Uh, we are part of it as a company. Tell me more. What yeah, the mean? Alliance is about like the government entities should the, all the three D printing established ones companies should be registered in that alliance. Okay. And they should support each other, and they should support government and their requirements. That actually happened post COVID, because in the COVID times, um, the supply chain from China was stopped. So they needed face shield, they needed face mask, the medical uh, uh, frontliners needed some support. So we supported them, the 3D printing companies in whole Dubai, like including Proto, we did face shield, we did uh, splitters for the uh, ventilators, we did face masks, we did a lot of things. So it was realized that 3D printing is supporting the... Locally, yeah. because the supply, yes. I mean, import yeah. stops. So this alliance is about connecting those companies with each other. So they see not each other as a competitor, but they see as a... Uh, as a team to the whole uh, uh, alliance and the future uh, goals of Dubai for 3D printing. And that alliance is also talking about government companies to give preference to 3D printing. Okay. Now that's an interesting thing. You don't have it anywhere in the world. Preference to 3D printing means... To, to create these objects. I mean, use 3D printing for their requirements. Like I just showed you for Etisalat, we're doing some map. For Expo 2020, we're using 3D printing. For Adnoc, for Minister of Defense, for Dubai Police, all of these are government companies. They have been, they have been uh, prescribed, if I may say the word, to uh, prefer yeah. 3D printing. Because if they prefer 3D printing, they're doing it locally. They're supporting the local companies in, in, in Dubai UAE, which is good for us, good for them. It's very beneficial for yes, the, 100 percent for you and local 3D printer companies. I see so much interest from government employees, companies. Um, they, they're interested in 3D printing, they visit us here, they see what we're doing, they give us some projects, just not for the business, but just to see how the technology is going to help them. So, from your passion question, what would you like to print, 3D print or additive technology to use it? I don't know, any object or uh, any vision that you have? <laughs> uh, this is a nice question. Um, I'm into watches. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm a watch collector. Okay. I want to do uh, 3D print a clock. <laughs> That will be functional, um, automatic. You mean all the parts? Yes. Like you, you explained the shell. Yeah, I want to. I'm waiting for the for the technology to reach where you can 3D print the entire mechanical watch that is automatic, so you don't need to put any batteries and it can function. So okay. it's my interest. I mean, something that is in 3D printing is out of my passion is, and then it's my crazy goals. It's they they tell you don't. It's okay to have crazy goals, right? Can I? Sure. So I want to literally 3D print something that goes on Mars in my lifetime. All right, your own kind of creation object. I want to 3D print something that is going to put on a plane from my factory, Okay. goes towards a NASA center that is installed in a rocket. Okay. And that rocket goes to the Mars 
and then another robot brings out that part and uses it for the Mars colony. Okay, wow. It's my dream. That's fantastic. They say you can dream as much as you want, right? So I want to dream. Okay. I dreamt this place. I cannot believe when I see this whole thing. I'm like, oh, wow. Well, who's complete? It's nice. <laughs> like, good. because I dreamt about it when I was in back in college doodling Productivity logo in my backseat in engineering graduation year. I'm here. So, who's stopping you to dream? You can dream as much as you want. I definitely see you you on the way. And I finish you, yeah, to, to make Why it not? happen. Absolutely. I mean, we're going to follow you and we will for the Thank announcement you. that your object is in the Mars. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. for coming, guys. Bye. Well, that's it for this episode. Hope you guys learned something more about regional 3D printing industry or like I should say correctly additive manufacturing. Please leave a comment and let us know what you like to hear more, which industries we should visit or maybe some specific questions I should ask. So subscribe, like, help us grow and I see you next time. Thank you.